what was the development cycle for the QX5 in terms of time? It was roughly a year, give or take a month or two. Hmm. Um, and uh, we, of course, hope that it would be shorter, but once you get into it and realize, um, and you know, you start learning some things and say, and, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And so, you know, we actually, um, you know, adding so many things that we haven't done before, um, you know, it, it, it takes longer than you expect. So from the software side, your development cycle was roughly the same, is that right? Yeah, uh, I was sort of working side by side with Ariel the whole time as, as he would come up with uh, new issues to address. I was able to work with him on that from the software side. Okay. Uh, it was really nice to have, essentially have that partnership where if there was a hardware issue, but uh, I could address it in software, but however it was needed and you could do the same for any hardware or hardware issues I was having as well. And so Ethernet is new to yeah, air. That's certainly new to air. We were lucky enough to find a partner that had a fairly drop in solution. Um, we you know we have been watching Ethernet solutions for, for many years and mm -hmm. have not seen anything that really fit our requirements or, or was up to, up to the level of performance that we required. And so we, uh, we came across this last year and it, um, it basically fit our, fit our requirements perfectly. From a user perspective in terms of controlling the QX5, could you talk a little bit about the options? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the best way for the user to control the QX5, in my opinion, is through the Ethernet because you have a lot of options. It's, it's really, really versatile. There's, uh, we support three different standards for Ethernet uh, streaming. The, the RAAT standard for Rune, uh, Spotify, and then DLNA. Mm -hmm. So any of those like give the user a way to stream music to the QX5 over the network, and that's uh, it's really nice, because uh, you can just pop your phone out when you get home and start playing music from any of your favorite sources. With Ethernet, were there any additional isolation requirements? The way we implement it is, you know, we, it is completely galvanically isolated. Um, Ethernet itself is naturally differential signals, and so it, we, that, that is then uh, transformer coupled, um, which is somewhat standard for, 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 an, for, an, for an Ethernet input. So it, it's completely galvanically isolated, and then just with proper PCB stack of design and, and PCB layout and power supply design, we keep it as well isolated as we can from the rest of our system. Mm -hmm. um, it, it naturally has non-audio related clocks because it's Ethernet, which has its own fairly strict clocking standards. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do about that, but um, we keep it um, um, isolated just, in, just with proper PCB design, mm -hmm. power supply design. Could you explain just briefly what galvanic isolation means for the non-technical? <laughs> yeah, so galvanic isolation just means that there is no direct um, electrical connection or any current path um, so that um, you can have one possible way so that you can have very different DC levels. You know, the, the ground levels can be wildly different. Um, basically, this is basically transformer coupled. It's the same way a transformer couples is a, a coil of wire, mm -hmm. and it's it's is then magnetically coupled to another coil of wire to transmit the signal. So there's no, um, yeah, there's there's no direct electrical connection from uh, from one domain to the other domain. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the digital side and the analog side, are they powered separately? Yeah, we have several different power supply regions. We have four completely separate transformers, each of them with multiple windings. So we have uh, uh, pretty, pretty significant power supply isolation for several of the different digital domains as well as the analog domain. Could you give us a little discussion about the clock in here? I understand you worked with a Russian company. Yeah, we um, we partnered with Morion Os Crystals and Oscillators for, for this product, and so we um, we actually developed a special oscillator with them. It's not one that they offer to anybody else, and it's just basically a custom product for us. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a ultra high performance crystal oscillator, and we use two of them: one for the forty four base and one for forty eight based uh, material. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we don't do any kind of asyn uh, asynchronous sample rate conversion. We use the proper clock for the proper input right. source. Okay. Um, and so, 
yeah, these are just ultra high performance crystal crystal oscillators that are custom designed for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then this unit incorporates some of AIR's existing technology. Some of our more recent advancements that we've you know been some of our like uh, like on our our series products, the MXR and KXR, we you know, we've developed you know our whole diamond circuitry, and so we use this extensively in this product. The the entire uh, analog output is all diamond circuit based. Um, we use it. Um, um, you know the places I probably can't even talk about yet, um, but, but yeah, I mean the, the, the analog circuitry is is, is entirely uh, diamond circuit based, um, um, JFED input, which is one of our hallmarks um, for low noise and low mm -hmm. distortion. And can you talk a little bit about why XLRs a preferable output? Yeah, so XLR or you know balanced output um, is the best way to transmit analog signal. By doing balance or differential, you, it naturally cancels um, any kind of noise picked up internally or externally, but also you know, balance it uh, because you have basically a differential power supply also in our circuit, it can actually, you know, it minimizes the, the effect of any power supply noise. Um, it, it is, um, as far as implementation, because we do both complementary and balance, it essentially quadruples the, 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 the physical circuitry needs of a typical single-ended circuit. Mm -hmm. um, so we have four times the circuitry to do proper balance, but um, the benefits far outweigh the, mm -hmm. the cost. Were there any particular challenges that were more <laughs> difficult than others? So we work with Converse Digital um, to do our network solution, uh, and it's been an ongoing relationship with them to keep firmware changes coming, address small issues like that, and that relationship has been really fruitful. We've had a lot of, accomplished quite a bit with them, but it's definitely been the one where we've had to put the most effort in to get the results that we want. And then from a user perspective, again, how would one initiate a firmware update. So this uh, is actually pretty cool because you can do all of your updates at home just using a USB flash drive and your network connection. You can update all of the firmware in the QX5 that you need. Um, I mean, it's as easy as turning the QX5 off, putting the firmware in the back, turning it on, and it Recognize. off you go. Yeah, OK. Mm. The network update works through FTP just through our server here. So that gets downloaded and, and installed when a new update is available. It automatically checks. And then there's also this option, which exists on the QA9, um, which the user can select the output set to measure and listen. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so on almost all of our digital products, uh, start, starting with the D1 DVD player from 15 years ago or so, mm -hmm. um, we have um, we've offered um, typically two different digital filter um, um, uh, selections. Um, one is, is listen is basically a slow roll off filter and is better in the time domain, and mm -hmm. a, a measure filter, which is a steeper roll off with more typical off the shelf available um, brick wall style filter that measures better in the frequency domain and mm -hmm. by, by most measurements, uh, but in our experience, uh, does not sound as good as a more natural, still roll off, much more like nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we have, we have continued that um, in, all, in almost all of our digital products. And so this, um, there is, if, if you go into the menu, you, you can select um, three different modes uh, for each input. There's, we have our music mode, which is essentially the same as our listen setting. Mm -hmm. And we have a video mode and a measure mode. And this employs AIR's minimum phase filter? Yep. It employs the same, um, um, our, our, our same digital filters, um, the same, um, the, the same roll off, the same. Right. So you're, by, you're not using the uh, filters that are embedded in the ESS chip? Correct. Yeah, no, we, we, um, 
Um, the ESS Shep and any of the DAC chips we ever use, we, we typically will bypass most of the features of the chip itself, any of the uh, oversampling, any of the mm -hmm. um, any of their digital filters, we bypass that and just use essentially their the output modulator. And this is all the minimum phase filter is employed in an FPGA. Correct. Y yes, th that is that is then easily um, you know w w with with the firmware upgrade feature it um, mm -hmm. it, 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 it we can easily um, uh, we can easily change any of the functions of that of that device. Um, so if we find mm -hmm. a, a few years time, if we find something else we want to add, a feature, a, a, another another filter set that is easily added in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. This, yeah, the, the more that FPGA-based solutions are employed, you're almost buying into a somewhat future-proofed product. Yes. Yeah, and you can benefit from advances and improvements um, with just a firmware upgrade, which is really kind of, it's an interesting, uh, it makes the reviewing perspective, it's almost like, uh, the product is never done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you heard the new filter? Well, no, I haven't. I need to hear you. But it's a win-win for the uh, customer, I think. Yeah. So if you were to sum up the QX5, you know, so we've talked about all these pieces and parts, and, but it, this is, I mean, obviously what this is delivering to people is really what could be in uh, nearly all-in-one solution for uh, digital, any any type of digital requirements you might have, streaming, right, serving. Yeah, we really made a name for ourselves in the DAC market with the QB9 and with our with our USB only DAC, mm -hmm. and with our completely isolated, as well as asynchronous USB. Then our hallmark of power supply and um, as well as balanced analog audio. This, you know, we. Um, you know, we had a lot of requests from the market for years and years, years to do. They want more than more than USB, mm -hmm. and so w looking at the other solutions, we, we we didn't feel we could live up to that level that uh, that we that we'd already um, marked w w with the USB. So with this, we were able to do that. So we basically took the same ideas that we implemented USB with, asynchronous. Um, and as well as I said, so all of our SPDIF on the Toshlink or the BNC or the ASCBU are all galvanically isolated inputs. Mm -hmm. They're all asynchronous. The Ethernet is asynchronous. We we are the master clock, mm -hmm. and, and then all the, the data we receive is synced to that. We're not we're not slaving to any clock coming in on any of our inputs. 